Hey Ferret fam, welcome back to our channel. Happy to see you here today. We are going to be going over my raw feeding expenses to give you a better look at what I buy monthly for them and how much I spend. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about my meal plan right now and I'm going to be going over some questions that I asked you guys on Instagram on nutrition diet for ferrets and we're going to be answering them today. Before I begin, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my most favorite ferret accessory shop, Pets Galore Studio. Amanda was kind enough to send me some goodies. The first thing is this adorable ferret shirt. It is super comfy, super high quality. She also sent me this super cute Patsu and Friends pillow, which I'm super stoked about. This magnet, it says carnivores like it raw on there, which is very appropriate for me. And we had discussed before that Momo doesn't have a harness that fits her currently because she's so tiny. And Amanda was kind enough to actually custom make a harness for Momo. It is a adorable little pink polka dot. It actually fits her super duper well, even though she is so tiny and slinky. So again, huge shout out to Amanda at Pets Galore Studio. I have always been very, very satisfied with her products. I have a bunch of collars from her. I had cage liners, hammocks, everything from her. I pretty much exclusively buy my ferret stuff from Amanda. So definitely go check out her shop. I will have her website link in the description of this video. Okay, so moving Moving on to the topic of this video, I'm actually going to be going over my raw feeding expenses for the past three months because that is when I began actually recording how much I was spending so that I could share it with you guys to give you a little bit of a better idea on how much it costs to feed raw. Now keep in mind, I have five young and active ferrets that eat a lot of food. That's why it's so hard to give out estimates because all ferrets eat a different amount of food. Okay, so the first month that I'm going over is June 2020. Um, as you can see, I went to a normal grocery store. I also had my one online order for that month from Raw Feeding Miami. Um, this is a fairly normal expense list. Pork chops for a variety, whole chickens for meaty bone, drumsticks for meaty bone, eggs. The eggs I get are always free range. You should shoot for pastured if you can obtain that, um, but it's going to cost you a little bit more, so keep that in mind. I also did my, again, once a month online order with a raw food company. This month I did Raw Feeding Miami. Uh, I got a bunch of duck frames uh, for meaty bone, turkey necks for meaty bone, which is maybe fed no more than twice a week for my guys, uh, liver, kidneys, hearts. And let me say that the cost of organs is going to depend based on the protein. For example, rabbit liver is going to be more expensive than chicken liver. Chicken hearts is one of the more cheaper hearts that you can buy, but if you have a lot of ferrets like me, they go through a lot. So I generally get pork heart because because they are quite big and the ferrets really enjoy them. So my total in the online order, which does include shipping in that, was a bit over $100 for five young and active ferrets. So this was a great month for us. July 2020 was a lot more than normal because I chose to check out a local butcher, which I wasn't exactly happy with, long story short. So I'm not gonna be going back there, but I'll talk a little bit about that more in a second. Uh, Hannaford's is a normal grocery store and I bought more free range eggs there. There. marrow bones for bone broth, split chickens for meaty bone, wild salmon for the fish portion of the diet, and more pork loins. If I'm going to be feeding some muscle meats, pork is my go-to just because it is a red meat. My ferrets really enjoy it and it's easy to cut portion and add to meals. I chose wild caught salmon because it's honestly one of my favorite fish to feed them. I have just received the best results while feeding wild caught salmon. It really helps make their coats super shiny and soft. And again, it's kind of like pork loin where it's just really easy to feed. I buy the individually frozen packages of salmon fillets that are sold in like a bulk bag. Again, the marrow bones are for broth. These cannot be consumed by ferrets. They are much too dense. So I actually just use the bones to create bone broth. Recipe will be in the description of this video. And then at the other grocery store I went to, I got more whole chickens and drumsticks. As you can see, my ferrets go through a lot of whole chickens and I really like to get them because I can rotate through wings 
strings, drumsticks. Um, they usually have a little bag of neck in there, uh, frames. You can really utilize most of the chicken when you get the whole chicken and it just lasts me a lot longer and it's more cost efficient for me. And at the butcher, I had gotten rabbit bones, which were supposed to be meaty rabbit bones. They turned out to be mostly bone with no meat attached. So I salvaged what I could, but the bulk of it was actually used to make bone broth. I think I made probably two months of bone broth, the amount of meaty rabbit bone that I got. Uh, the chicken parts were bogus because uh, one of the bags I opened up smelled like human feces. It was absolutely probably the worst smell I have ever smelled in my entire life. So I threw out all the chicken parts, which really sucks because I hate to be wasteful, but it smelled really, really bad. However, the pork hearts I'm very satisfied with. They're all of very good quality, all individually wrapped and frozen. I'm very happy with the pork hearts and I'm actually still working through them. I did end up having to buy more liver this month from the store and even more marrow bones to go with the rabbit to make more bone broth because I wasn't sure how much marrow and um, glucosamines and whatnot that would be extracted from the rabbit bone. So I wanted to make sure that I had a large source of that to go along with the rabbit bone. I also got turkey thighs, which proved to be a really good boneless meat source for variety purposes, and chicken feet, which are sold super cheap at that particular store. I always make sure to grab a bunch of chicken feet. In total, I spent about $170, which again is much more than what I usually spend. And lastly, we have August's expenses. Um, my online order for August was done through Hair Today, and I got a bunch of duck meaty bones. I got um, duck necks, duck pieces, ground white fish, which is my favorite. It's one of their most favorite fish meals, some adult mice and duck head. I went through the duck honestly pretty quickly. I still have the white fish because that lasts me a couple months and I still have the mice as well because I do one to two mice per week for whichever ferret um, feels like eating mice that week. I did buy more whole dressed chickens and I also needed more livers, feet, and more turkey breast because they really enjoyed meals of chicken feet and turkey breast. Chicken feet has a very high bone percentage over the meat percentage, so it shouldn't necessarily be fed on its own. Um, you should mix it up with a boneless meat or organs, so turkey breast or thigh um, works really well for that purpose. The primary staples that I do are chicken, pork, and duck, sometimes turkey and rabbit if I can get it. I also do various different types of fish, tripe. I'm currently doing one to two mice a week and I plan on increasing that amount as more of my ferrets grow accustomed to eating mice. Always aim for at least three different proteins that you rotate through weekly and one of them should be a red meat source like pork, bison, goat, lamb, and so on. And pay attention to sourcing if you have that luxury. Uh, organic, free-range, grass-fed, and grass-finished animals are the best options if you have those. Also, you'll notice that some months I buy a lot of organs, some months I don't. It's because organs are going to last you the longest in your freezer. You're only going to go through a small amount each week. So generally they last you a lot longer than raw meaty bones do. My ferrets plow through raw meaty bones and I often have to keep buying them. Now I'm going to be going over my current meal plan with you guys but before I do that a couple disclaimers. My plan changes a lot depending on the season, their energy levels, and their requirements so please do not replicate my meal plan. Meal plans are meant to be created based on the individual needs of every ferret. I'm also not going to be listing the specific amounts because again I really want to make sure that you guys understand that all ferrets are individual. There is no one size fits all meal plan for them. I think that that could actually be quite dangerous. So this is my meal plan. As you can see, I do feed quite a lot of raw meaty bone, which I'm going to talk about in a second. A little bit of fish. We got mussels, tripe, and two meals of organs and heart. Keep in mind, I'm not doing every raw meaty bone meal as duck heads or feet, higher bone percentage meats, because that would throw off the meal plan and it just wouldn't be nutritionally adequate. I make sure to do a mix of balance raw meaty bone um, with more of a balanced ratio of meat to bone. Some meals are higher in bone and some are not. The key in raw feeding is variety. So I will do, let's say, you know, drumsticks, wings, necks, backs, frames, feet. I try to really make it so that they eat almost kind of like the whole animal at some point during the week. I try to follow a rule of threes with everything that I do with them for raw feeding. I don't exceed more than three meals of necks 
or three meals of wings. I've also chosen to integrate a two organ meal schedule rather than the three like I was doing previously. This is because organ meals create some wicked diarrhea and it's been working a lot better for us to do one organ meal with heart on Tuesday and then the second one on Friday. It's still everything that they need during the week just split into two meals instead of three. You may notice that three meals really works for your ferrets and that is a totally good. I feed fish with either a raw meaty bone meal or in a soup. Lately I've been doing it with the raw meaty bone meals because I noticed the more extras that I throw into their soups, the less willing they are to eat all of it. So this has just been really working out well for us. Mussels always go into a soup because they are pretty smelly, the green limp ones are anyways. So I will do one large mussel for my five ferrets because they are quite big. And your ferrets are going to be utilizing the trace minerals in the food, meaning that they don't need a huge amount of mussels to get those trace minerals. I also feed tripe. I just made an entire post on tripe on my Instagram page and I also have an entire blog post dedicated to the subject as well if you want to learn more about tripe. I also feed a few splashes of my homemade bone broth daily, usually in the morning, and I do about one to two whole eggs with shell weekly. Sometimes I'll spread it in their organ meals or I will do it. Um, sometimes when I feed their mice, I will chop up the mouse and drench it in egg because they are still growing accustomed to having more whole prey in their diet. Okay, so now we move on to the questions that I ask you guys. The first question is, do I alternate fish and tripe in a meal plan or can they both be fed in one muscle meat meal? This is a great question. Most raw feeders choose to feed both fish and tripe into one meal, but you can certainly spread it out, mix it in with their favorite meals or put it in organ meal, whatever your ferrets prefer. Number two, pros and cons of whole prey grinds. Another great question. Some pros of whole prey grinds are convenience. You usually have a large variety of options if you're using a provider such as My Pet Carnivore that has things like beaver, muskrat, um, beef, pork, you know, they've got all of these options which makes it really easy to provide variety into their diet. If the grind does not contain fur and feathers, which I'm pretty sure My Pet Carnivore does not include those things, I do recommend a couple times a week feeding something with fur or feathers on it, or you can feed mussels in tripe for similar benefits. Some cons for whole prey grinds are they're very, very expensive. You generally have to buy them online, which will bump up the price quite a bit. And also they don't do a whole lot for teeth. They do have loads of healthy enzymes and you're not going to be getting that kibble sludge that sticks to teeth when you're feeding kibble. However, the bones are not significant size whatsoever to actually scale teeth like how they do in the wild. So you will either need to brush teeth very frequently or you're going to need to follow more of a mixed schedule of raw meaty bone and the whole prey grinds. Number three, what do you recommend having on hand when first starting out? Definitely a good quality pair of shears. I use the OXO brand. I'll put a picture up here. This works super well to cut both through muscle and through actual bone. I love to make sure that the shears that I have on hand are really good at cutting through bone because that's what I mainly use them for. Your cutting board should be hard plastic that you replace every couple months. Blender or food processor is key during the transition if you need to make um, really wet foods to get them onto raw. And also if you choose to do organ soups like I do, because I do have a lot of ferrets, it can be difficult to ensure that they are all getting the organs that they need. That is why I choose to blend up all of their organs. And of course, you're going to need a very good quality cleaver and whatever you're gonna use to actually store the meat in your freezer. Number four, I tried to give my ferrets raw, but he just won't eat in any presentation. What can I do? So this is a loaded question and a huge reason why I created my mentoring program because it is such a big question that has a lot of steps in it. So I'll direct you over to that if nothing online is helping you. Ferrets imprint on their food at weaning so it can become more difficult to switch them onto a newer food as they grow older but it is certainly never impossible. So yeah go check that out if you're interested in having a mentor help you along in your transition if you cannot do it on your own with the resources online. Number five, how much do you give a young ferret in grams? Another very 
loaded question. This totally depends on the sex of the ferret, time of year, energy levels, and so on. It also depends on what you mean by young. I don't know if you mean an eight week old kit, 10 week old kit, 10 month old kit. I have no idea. Ferrets under a year old tend to have black hole stomachs. They will just keep eating and eating and eating. Generally about 10 to 20% of their body weight, they're going to keep eating up until they become adults and they sort of settle into a more um, adult schedule. Like four to six ounces, which is 113 grams to 170 grams per ferret daily. That's just an example and will not be appropriate for all ferrets. Number six, how often should I feed whole prey and what size? So if you're feeding a diet of only whole prey, you're gonna to want to feed it daily of course um, either once daily or twice keep prey small to best mimic their natural diet you know don't go trying to feed them whole prey cow or whole prey alpaca um, these animals are much too big and it's gonna be really hard to make sure that the diet plan is nutritionally adequate so stick to small animals like quail mice Rats. Again, I do have a brand new post on this on my Instagram page if you are interested in learning more about feeding whole prey. Number seven, is it okay to switch to franken prey from grinds? Absolutely, it may require a bit of transition. But I was able to successfully switch my ferrets from whole prey grinds onto franken prey with ease. It did take about a week or two to really get them back onto big pieces of bones and chunks of meat, but it can absolutely be done. Number eight, is there a way to make green tripe appealing to ferrets, adding it to organ soup maybe? So my ferrets adore tripe when it is mixed into their organ soups. Um, some of them do like it on their own as well. Really depends on your ferret. Number nine, how do you feed raw to a mink? Know anyone who can help? So feeding a mink is very similar to ferrets, but they are semi-aquatic animals, so their diet is generally gonna consist of more seafood items and water reciting animals such as muskrat. In the summertime, mink eat a lot of frogs and crayfish along with shrews, rabbit, muskrat, and mice. In the winter, they eat mostly mammals. So the best thing that you can actually do is follow along with the seasons. Um, if you're feeding a mink in the summer, do what they would normally catch in the summer. And in the winter, do what they would normally eat in the winter just to best mimic their natural diet. Number 10, what are some bones that are easy to cut other than necks? Totally depends on what you're using to cut. If you're using shears like I do, I really like to cut through um, chicken and duck frames are actually pretty easy if you have a nice sharp pair of shears. And also rabbit bone, quail is really easy to cut through, Cornish hen and frog. Number 11, when I feed chicken feet, should I cut the nails off? I'm always worried it will cut them. This is a really good question and not one that I'm asked super often. I personally leave the nails because, I mean, in the wild, if they were to eat a chicken's foot or a bird foot, they would certainly eat the nails. However, if you do choose to remove them, it's not a huge deal. They won't be missing out on a ton of nutrients if you do that. Number 12, how did you learn about raw for ferrets? So online websites taught me the base model and base rules when feeding ferrets, but I learned the most when reaching out to the dog and cat raw feeding communities because they have been raw feeding them for a lot longer. Dogs and cats have been domesticated for a lot longer than ferrets, so there's a lot more information out there if you branch out into their worlds, and a lot of it can be applied to ferrets as long as you know what you're doing, you know the differences between dogs and ferrets and cats and ferrets. I also watch a lot of webinars, seminars, live Q&As. I have done nutrition courses. I'm in a nutrition program right now for dogs and cats, and that is really where I learn most of my information. 13. Portion for one ferret and how to know what you need to give him for a balanced diet. So I'm not going to be able to answer this question. There's not a one-size-fits-all meal plan for ferrets. They are all very individual with their own needs. To figure out a portion size for a ferret, I'm going to need to know the weight, age, energy level. As far as nutrients go and how to figure out if you are providing a nutritionally adequate meal plan, I just recommend to do your research, reach out to raw feeders online, and have your meal plan assessed by an experienced raw feeder. Number 14, is there a good quality kibble? I get asked this one a lot. There is higher quality kibbles. I wouldn't necessarily call them good though. For example, um, you know, you got Meow Mix at very, very low tier, and then you've got things like Dr. Elsie's, which is much higher than Meow Mix, but it is still not perfect. That is the thing with kibbles because um, to keep their shape, they need starches and carbs to keep the kibble from just crumbling away and falling apart. All of it is processed food. 
all of it contains at least a couple ingredients that are not biologically appropriate. So for that reason, I do not believe that there is a good kibble. However, there are good dry, lightly processed diets such as Ziwi Peak, which is air dried raw food. I have a video all on that link at the top of the screen. Again, it is still a processed food and it still contains synthetics, but it is levels higher. And thoughts on Stella and Chewy freeze dried raw for ferrets. This is actually a very popular company fed to ferrets and it is freeze dried raw food. They do obviously have kibbles and stuff like that, but the freeze dried raw is mainly fed to cats and ferrets. I don't recommend this company and it is not my favorite company for a couple different reasons. The main one being that they do use high pressure pasteurization, also known as HPP. I will link below a very detailed article on why HPP isn't great for raw food. HPP alters the nutrients and kills enzymes that are naturally occurring in the raw food in an attempt to rid of the pathogenic bacteria if any are present. In my opinion, you're essentially ridding the raw food of all of its good natural so I don't really consider HPP food raw food. I mean, it certainly is healthier than, you know, a processed kibble, but it's not to the level of normal raw food in my opinion. It also contain quite a bit of synthetics and iffy ingredients. The ingredient list is quite large for Stella and Chewy's when compared to other freeze-dried raw brands such as Feline Natural by Canine Natural. I think that this brand of freeze-dried raw is quite good how to convince parents to switch to raw. So you definitely can't force them. I recommend having them sit down and watch the Pet Fooled documentary. Do your research, collect all of your information, put it into a binder and a folder, and just calmly explain to them why you want to feed raw, um, how you are going to contribute financially. Go over the popular myths of raw feeding. I find that a lot of people are turned off by raw because they think it is bacteria riddled and it's gonna make everyone in the house sick, your animals sick, and the same risk are present when feeding kibble so I think that if you show them the charts show them the numbers of how many animals get sick from kibble every year how much red meat versus white meat should they be getting I heard red meat is harder for them to digest so I'm not sure where you heard that piece of information but the natural diet of the ferret is actually primarily red meats that's what wild game is mostly considered frog is considered white and they do eat a lot of frog but um, aside from that rabbits, hares, all that great stuff is considered red meat in the wild. But most raw feeders do choose to feed a mix of white and red meats for variety's sake in the nutrient profiles. What treats can I give my raw fed ferret? I actually have a blog post dedicated to all things treats that I will link below. What time do you feed breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So I only feed twice a day, technically breakfast and dinner, and it's not the same time every day. However, don't let your ferret go hungry for too long. They use their food to regulate their blood sugar levels. So if they go extended periods of time without food, they are unable to properly do that along with other bodily functions that they need. When I give my ferret who loves raw meat a raw egg, he just has lots of diarrhea. So that is totally normal. We actually call it eggy poops. Um, basically what happens when a ferret eats an egg is they might have yellow, sulfur smelling, stinky poops, but then it should go back to normal and the egg should help burn things up after that. And our last question for today is if I don't have a crock pot, how do I make bone broth? And I will have links below on how you can make bone broth without using a crock pot. I have not personally tried these methods, um, so don't hold me to it if it doesn't work, but you can certainly do it as far as I know without a crock pot. All right, that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you learned a thing or two about raw feeding. Like with anything, please do your research before switching your ferret's diet. It is very crucial that you are keeping up to date in the community. Branch out to dog and cat raw feeding communities as well. Thank you to all of our channel members here and for those who have bought merch. Super happy and very thankful for you guys. And I am going to see you in my next video, which will be next week. Thursdays at 3 o'clock is when I upload. Do not forget to subscribe hit the like button and turn on your notifications. I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.